So let's take a look and understand what's happening with an Apple ID. What is an Apple ID? Apple ID is how you interact with Apple. Whether you have an iPhone or iPod or iPad or a Mac, it doesn't matter. If you do anything with Apple, if you register with them in any way, you have an Apple ID. And an Apple ID has to be an email address. Okay. So, for example, your Apple ID lets you purchase things from the iTunes store. And iTunes includes the books that they have, any videos, TV shows, any of that, uh, podcasts, music, the app store. That all comes through iTunes. Now, on an iPad or iPhone, otherwise known as iOS devices, there's a separate app. There's an iTunes store app, but then there's an app store app and a music app. And they just kind of break the whole iTunes from your computer, all the different components. They're separate apps. That's one reason that you need an Apple ID to do anything with iTunes. The other, I'm going to call utilities. Those are other apps on your iOS device and or your Mac. These are all things that can be synced between all of your iOS devices and a Mac and in some cases a PC. So these are things like your photos, the notes, your calendar, your contacts, FaceTime, the messages. All of those also are tied to your Apple ID. So for any of our District 45 iPads, we have an Apple ID. We'll call that the school Apple ID. And it's also used to get apps from the App Store and music, podcasts, videos, books, all that other stuff too. But we don't usually do that with our school Apple ID. But those same utilities are also tied to the Apple ID. We can see here, if we have any of our schools, multiple iPads, they use the same Apple ID. So they're all tied to the same account. Do you see the problem with this? Big problem, especially over here, is that if you put in a contact using this school Apple ID, it's going to show up on every one of the iPads that are also using those contacts. Or if you send a text message and you're logged into the school Apple ID, it's going to show up on any of the other school iPads that have messages turned on. So by default, these get turned off in the tech department before the iPad goes out. So as a D45 teacher, this is how we're recommending that you use your iPad. Your iPad can be associated with more than one Apple ID. So if you're going to use it for to get your mail and you want to keep your calendar and messages and all those other things in the utilities, then you sign in with a personal Apple ID. Now, if you have, like I said, if you have any kind of iTunes account, you already have an Apple ID, it's the same one. An iPhone, iPad, if you already have one of those, you already have an Apple ID, so you can use that. Or you could make a separate one if you didn't want to use your personal personal one, if you wanted a separate district one and possibly use your district email and set up a password. Then you could use the messages in FaceTime because you won't be connected to a school Apple ID. If you leave the school Apple ID logged in, like I said, all of these are automatically turned off. If the school or the district purchased an app for the iPad, you would have to log out of your personal and log into the school Apple ID to get that app. But then you could log back out and log back into your personal. That's how I do it. That's how I kind of recommend that you do it. 
So when you're logged in with the district Apple ID, you have access to iTunes and the App Store. And in the App Store app, there's a section called Purchased. In that Purchased section, you will see any apps that have been purchased by any of the iPads associated with that district Apple ID. By purchased, we mean that it was acquired using a specific Apple ID. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be paid. It could be a free app as well. So the purchase section has all of the apps that have been acquired by that Apple ID. So if you're logged in with your school Apple ID, you're going to see all the purchased apps by anyone else who has gotten an app using that Apple ID. That's not a problem. However, purchased apps can be the free ones that were acquired with that Apple ID, or it could be actual paid ones. They all show up. And the problem is, is that the free apps can legally be put on any and all of the iPads because they're free. The paid apps can only be put on, for example, these three apps that we paid for three licenses for. It is illegal to put them on the rest of them. However, you don't know that when you go into the purchased apps. It's hard to tell which ones were free and which ones were purchased. The easiest way to figure that out would be to open iTunes on a computer, open the App Store, and search for the name of the app, and then it will come up and say either free or have a price. So that's what an Apple ID is. That's how we kind of work with them here in the district. I hope this was helpful and informational so you kind of understand what's going on now.